من الماء قال لا عاصم اليوم من أمر الله إلا من رحم وحال بينهم الموت فكان من المغرقين وقيل يا أرض بلعي ما أكم يا سماء أقلعي وغيد الماء وقودي الأمر واستوت واستوت على رجودي وقيل بؤذا للقوم الظالمين صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد الحمد لله with the grace of Allah سبحانه وتعالى once again we have sat here in the house of Allah سبحانه وتعالى in the circle in the gathering of the tafsir of Surah Hud after completion of month of Ramadan this is the very first weekend <coughs> of that's a Quran interpretation of Quran in English <coughs> the verses which I have recited before you are the verses of Surah Hud as you all know the under going tafsir is the tafsir of surah hud and in these very verses which i managed to recite before you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stating the story of prophet nu alayhi salatu wasalam in my last weeks in the month of ramadan now last week but in month of ramadan the last interpretation and the last gathering of this english this i gave i mentioned in that thus and in that gathering that the nu alayhi salatu salam was informed by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the people who have already believed the other believers now no more will believe in you so therefore you start making a ship a boat on which you can board and the people who have believed in you can aboard <coughs> after the instruction of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nu alayhi salatu salam began to make a boat and he built a three storied ship and also he was instructed by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to board on this ship the animals a pair of the animals male and female once the ship was prepared it was ready it was built allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beforehand had informed nu alayhi salatu salam that the flood will be coming and the people who did not believe in you will be drowned once the ship was ready allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying wa qala kabu fiha 
نو علیہ السلات السلام آسکڈ دا بلیورس ٹو امباک دا شپ بسم اللہ مجرحا و مرساحا اللہ از سینگ ہی سیٹ ٹو دا پیپل اٹس سیلنگ اینڈ اٹس ریسٹنگ اور اسٹاپنگ ول بی وتھ دی پاور آف اللہ سبحان خود اعلیٰ دس ویری بریف اسٹیٹمنٹ آف اللہ سبحان خود اعلیٰ ویری بریف but it is very comprehensive it can, it contains so many meanings allah is saying that he said to the people board it and the ship will sail with the power of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when it's going to stop it will stop with the power of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what do we learn from this here every transport the transport of the land or anything that is in the air flying or anything that is sailing on the waters it sails it moves and it stops with the power of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without the power of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it cannot sail and it cannot stop on its destination a man thinks he made the aeroplane he manufactured the aeroplane the train <coughs> the vehicles but this is not a case it's not the work of man it's the work of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how you will be asking how and it is a reality the man did make it there's no there's no doubt in this he used his hand he used his intelligence But this very statement is, is telling us everything, every transport is moving and stopping with the will of Allah and with the power of Allah. When the man makes these means of transport moving from here, there, all the material he uses to make all these things, who made the iron? Who created the iron? Who created the wood? and who created the metal everything has been created by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the work of the man was to gather all these things and manufacture the the plane and the train and the vehicles and on top of this if a man starts saying no i made it i use all these materials and i made it i use my intelligence the question is who gave him the intelligence who granted him the intelligence we see around us there are many people who mentally are not well you know so many people are born dumb and deaf they don't they, they do not know what's happening even with themselves you know mentally they are not well you know the people are born handicapped disabled So this proves if the man is man- manufacturing something and he is using his intelligence, his reasons, all these ni'mah and blessings have been given to the man by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Had he not given him the intelligence, he would not have been able to make an aeroplane or a train or any vehicle. It was the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided him all the materials. to make all these things so, so that he can move from one place to another place easily so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying every transport and moves it moves with the will of allah with the power of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this very small sentence very brief sentence teaches a lesson the word of a believer and the word of a non believer is totally different you know something when a believer steps in the vehicle this very vehicle you know makes him recognize it, it it makes him recognize who created this the believer when he sits in the airplane or in the train he realizes all this is given by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it introduces him the almighty the allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
Where is the disbeliever when he sits in the, in, in the transport? He doesn't, he doesn't ponder over these things. Although, although even today, the attitude of a believer is also, is, is also similar to the attitude of the non-believers. They don't ponder over anything. Even the, today, the believers don't even ponder. What I'm trying to say to you, the, the life of a believer and non-believer is totally different. Every item of this earth, you know, it, 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 it makes you recognize, realize and ponder. Oh man, you should ponder over this item. Who created it? When the man ponders just for a while, he will come to the conclusion, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Allah. There is a being who is hidden. You know, behind the screens, we cannot see him. He is the one who created everything. And he is the one who created the wood and the metal and the iron. The man used it. The man gathered all these things. And then he made these means of transport for himself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Bismillahi madreha wa mursaha. You know, when the, the, uh, when the ship is sailing, it sails with the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This should be the belief when, the, when a believer sits in the, in the ship, in the boat. You know, this he should, he should ponder over all this. And this will make him recognize there is a creator behind all this. And also when a believer sits in the car, you know, he should, he should ponder over this neema and this blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the man intelligence. He gave him the aql. He used his aql. He used his intelligence and his reason. And he was able to make this transport, you know, in which he can move very easily from one place to another place. And also... This is the etiquette and this is the dua we should also read. You know, when we're sitting in the, um, in the aeroplane or in the ship or in the vehicle, the Bismillah, Majreha, Mursaha, and also Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us another uh, dua which is in the, also in the Quran. All these duas, you know, we, if we, you know, today we think, you know, these Muslim duas, which have been taught by our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, we don't, you know, we don't take any notice of these du'as. You know, we take them very light. These daily du'as, which have been taught by our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and which have been taught by the Qur'an. If the man, if a believer adopts these du'as, <sighs> and if he, if he remembers them, if he memorizes them, and if he reads, you know, these du'as on a daily basis, you know, these du'as can take him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he can, you know, he can reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very easily, very easily. You know, uh, Sheikh Yunus Jaunpuri, you know, whom I have mentioned, you know, you know many times in, in this, uh, my uh, dars, you know, who was the, who was the Sheikh al-Hadith of uh, uh, Saharanpur uh, um, uh, Darulum and who just uh, in the last day who passed away in India. And he says, anyone you know, who says, who say, used to say, anyone who teaches a Bukhari, you know, who teaches the Sahih al-Bukhari, you know, there are, there are six authentic books of Ahadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, the, the most authentic book of Hadith is the book of, of uh, Sahih al-Bukhari. You know, today, you know, some people, you know, mis, uh, are misguided. And some people, you know, they, you know, they have this misconcept. They think, uh, they think the Hadith which is in Bukhari, this is the Hadith and that's it. No, you know, you could say they, they limit the deen to a Sahih al-Bukhari. Whereas Imam al-Bukhari, he himself admitted, he said, I have left many thousands, many ahadiths which were authentic, but I did not compile them in this book. Why? Fearing, fearing that the book, this my book will become very lengthy. So therefore I left them out. I did not compile them in this book. That doesn't mean if the hadith is not in Sahih Bukhari, this is not an authentic book. There are so many ahadith books besides a Sahih Bukhari. They are classed and they are considered by the Bahadisina, you know, by the uh, scholars as the authentic books. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, has given this uh, a Sahih Bukhari so popularity, you know. This was the due to the sincerity of Imam, uh, Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah, whose name was Muhammad bin Isba'il, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted in his, uh, his effort. And also, there are other five authentic books. You know, from one of them is the book of Ibn Majah. And if you look up Ibn Majah, in Ibn Majah, in Ibn Majah, there are some ahadiths 
which are classed as Zaif. But the question is, how come this book has been included in these six or seven books? Ibn Majah, you know, has some ahadis which are classed as you know weak ahadis. And can I say something to you? You know, some people think weak hadith, daif hadith, no hadith. No, no, this is not the case. It is a hadith. It is. Remember one thing in your mind. When you, somebody says this is a weak hadith, you know, straight away to the, to the mind goes, well, this is not a hadith then. It is a hadith. Definitely are the words of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the muhadithin, they classed it as weak. Why? You know, sometimes in the chain, you know, a ravi, the narrator comes, you know, they, when they look at his, you know, his personal biography and they, they find, you know, his personal circumstances, they find, you know, his memory, you know, is bit weak. His memory, on some stages, you know, he, you know, he became, you know, his, you know, his memory became very weak. So, that, well, this narrator in this chain, you know, he, you know, his memory was very weak. So, therefore, so, therefore, we, we will class this as, as uh, this hadith as, as a weak hadith. It doesn't mean that this hadith, you know, this hadith is not a hadith of Prophet Sallallahu It is a hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is where our youth go wrong. <coughs> this is where they go wrong. And they, you know, they, they just ignore, they, they, they just limit the deen to a Sahih al-Bukhari. So I was saying, Ibn Majah, Ibn Majah has some ahadith which are daif. I'm saying, they are daif, they are ahadith. But they are daif, meaning some narrators in those hadiths, you know, you know, they maybe their the memory became so weak, so the the, the muhadith seems to cast him as in this hadith that is, is weak. But you know, one question is, how come if this hadith, you know, this book contains some uh, weak hadith, why was it included in six or seventy books? Moran Islam al Haq, you know, he, he our teacher uh, in Darul Mubari who taught us a Sahih Bukhari, and who he he passed away in Madina al Munawwara. And he's, you know, he's been buried in Jannah al-Baqi. Our Prophet used to say, you know, if you want to die, you should die in Madinat al-Munawwara. And but what does it mean you should die in Madinat al-Munawwara? That doesn't mean you go and uh, commit suicide in Madinat al-Munawwara. It meant, the hadith means, you know, you should make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, you should make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, death is certain, we're going to die. Or oh, Allah gives a death in Madinat al-Munawwara. You know, in du'as, you know, du'a is, you know, today, you know, we, we Muslims, you know, we have forgotten, you know, this du'a, you know, we have, you know, uh, uh, we don't give any, any importance to the du'a, whereas the du'a has been classed as the weapon of a believer, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi saying, a du'a of silah mu'min, du'a is the weapon of a believer, you know, du'a is something that, that, that can change it can change the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing, nothing can change the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except the du'as. Du'a is such a power, you know, it, it contains such a power that it can change the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a decree and he decreed that, you know, a mountain should fall on you and you made a du'a that, oh Allah, you save me from all the calamities, what will happen? What will happen? The muhaddisin, they say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change the decree through the baraka of your dua. How? You know, something very light will fall on you. You know, the decree of Allah will happen, but, you know, the Allah made a decree that mountain is going to fall on you. It will not fall on you because of dua. Allah will, you know, Allah will change the decree and something very light will fall on you. So, he used to say, you know, our shaykh, Mawlana Islam Haqqam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is mercy upon him. And he used to say, the reason the book Ibn Majah has been included in these six authentic books is, is only, is because he used to say, I think, you know, his du'as worked. Maybe the author of Ibn Majah, the Sheikh Ibn, Imam Ibn Majah, in the hours of night, he made a du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his, for his work and for his book to be accepted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the bark of his, his du'as, you know, Allah accepted his du'as, that, you know, he, you know, he made his book to, to be included in the six authentic books. So all, you know, Sheikh Yunus used to say, you know, the people, if somebody is a, you know, he's, he's, he's a teacher of Sayyid Bukhari, and then he doesn't, you know, he doesn't read his du'as, daily du'as, then he used to say, what's the point of teaching the, the, the Sayyid Bukhari? What is the point of teaching a Sahih al-Bukhari if the one is not even, you know, reading these daily du'as of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You know, therefore we should, 
you know, we should, you know, learn, you know, there are so many books, you can, to, you can go to a bookshop and buy these dua in Masnuna, you know, the duas read by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, entering the mosque, you know, uh, coming out of the mosque, you know, going to the bed, waking up in the morning, you know, going to the toilet, coming out of the toilet, you know, when you sit to eat, you know, when you, when you sit in the car, you know, all, everything has been taught. If a person reads these du'as, you know, these du'as can take him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These du'as can make him the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These du'as can make him the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, you know, we should, you know, we should ignore these du'as. Oh, this is only a du'a. You know, you, you say this is a du'a. These are the very words. These are the very words that came out of the mouth of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the, whatever he said, whatever du'a he made, you know, it, can go, it cannot go wrong. You know, it will, you know, the, the, the spear, you know, the spear will go and hit the target. You know, the was, you know, these was which were taught by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if you make those was, you know, you know, when you are reading the was, these are the very words you are reading which came out of the blessed mouth of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala you know, has given us a one etiquette that when you sit, when you embark the ship, you know, you should read this dua. When you, uh, when you board on the vehicle or an airplane and train, you should read the dua. Learn this dua and the other dua which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa taught us. <clears throat> and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He said, Inna Rabbi la rahim. Indeed, my Lord is all forgiving and He is very merciful. And then He said, you know, about the, mm, the ship while we were sailing, you know, He what happened, the, the flood was coming and the, the waves were like the mountains. When the flood came, the waves were like the mountains. And what happened, Nu alayhi salatu saw his own son. Nu alayhi salatu salam saw his own son. And he said to him, oh my dear son, oh my beloved son, come on board the ship. And the son, you know what he said? He said, I will take a shelter of a mountain. I will climb the mountain. You know, now before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Nuh alayhi salatu salam to build a ship, it, he instructed him that don't speak to me. When the flood comes, then don't request me to forgive the wrongdoers. You know, Allah warned uh, Nuh alayhi salatu salam, when the flood will come, all the non-believers will be destroyed or no, I am instructing you, I am commanding you at that very moment, don't request me to forgive anyone the, the, the wrongdoers will not be forgiven, now here the question is how come Nuh uh, alayhi salam, can you go against the, uh, the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why, why did he ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know here you know, he's asking his son, first of all he's asking him, come and support the ship but he said, no, I will take the shelter. You know something? When a person becomes a believer, you know why he becomes a believer? Because of the because of the inner pride. You know, the pride is something that keeps you away from the haqq and from the truth. And this is the reality. As I, as I mentioned on either day, shaitan was rejected because of his pride. And if you look at the Quran, and you will find those people who did not believe in Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they did not believe. Why? Because they were the people of book. They were the people of book. They were reading the Torah. And they did not believe in the Prophet. Why? Because of the pride. Number one. And number two, because of the jealousy. These two, since I mentioned Friday as well, on, on, on Friday, on Eid prayer, jealousy and jealousy and pride are such a, you know, these two harmful sins that they keep you away and away from the truth. You know, a man, a young man, you know, today, you know, when we look at our youth, you know, they are, in, you know, they have big cars in driving and, you know, good clothes and so arrogant. You know, a man was walking, a man was walking in, 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 in a pride, you know, arrogantly he was walking and, and a, a, a pious man met him and saw him. You know, he said, don't walk arrogantly, you know, walk humbly. You know what he replied? He said, La tadri anta. you don't know who I am, you know. Not today when we when we go when we are on the car and on the road and sometimes you know our youth they just you know park the, the vehicle right in the middle of the uh, um, in the middle of the road and they are talking you know a car comes from the from the from the opposite side and they open the windows and talking and behind when somebody horns you know they look back and they stare at them who are you to tell me you know they they will, they will come out of the vehicle and they will, they will be ready to fight and this is arrogance you know this is arrogance making do all this 
you know, they don't know that the blocking of the way, you know, the, the vehicles are vehicle, vehicle park, and they are just saying, you know, who are you? You know, they're just talking, and he, all, there's a big, big shoe in the park because of them. And he said, you don't know who I am? No, this is this, this, just a reply, and then I will finish. He says, I know who you are. The past months, I know who you are. He said, your beginning, your beginning. He said to the youth, the young man who was, who was arrogantly walking, you know, with pride, showing that, you know, he's a young man, he's strong. He said, I know who you are. Your beginning is, is a filthy drop of, a drop of blood. This is your beginning. A filthy drop of blood and your end is, will, is a form of a dead body. And in between, and in between, you know what you are? You are carrying a filth in your stomach and you're walking. This is what you are. Allah. This is, you know, he said, and the young man said, you don't know who I am. Why are you telling me to, you know, walk uh, humbly? The man said, I know who you are. This is what you are. You know, we are, our beginning is a dirty drop of blood and our end will be, our end will be a dead body. And then people will be moving us. And, uh, and in between, wh what we are, we are carrying, a, we are carrying in our stomach a filth, and we are walking around. So, you know, the lesson we learn from here, you know, arrogance is something that you know it can it can it can drag you away from the truth, and it can drag you away from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And this is what happened with the son of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. Because his arrogance, he didn't believe in his father, uh, who was a prophet, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. And he joined the non-believers. And eventually, he was also uh, destroyed. And he was also drowned in the flood. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Muhammad.